Hello, everybody. Tony Soto here with the Tony Soto Show. Let me take a quick minute and explain what is going to happen right now. Now, I've mentioned on the Tony Soto Show podcast that I started a Patreon um, ages ago, but I'm just now learning how to work it. So... uh, (laughs) Um, I am doing, I'm showing you what you could get if you start to uh, sponsor the Tony Soto Show on our Patreon, because I'm going to start adding extra content. And this is a segment that's kind of like, you know, friends of the show that have been on the Tony Soto Show and um, are continuing to do awesome, awesome things. So, I am inviting Michael Henry back to the show. Hi, Hi Michael. And because I can't do anything without her, we have Casey Lai, my co-host from the Gay Power Half Hour. Hi, Hi Casey. Hi, guys. So um, we had you on the Tony Soto Show. Mm -hmm. You have been making uh, videos Uh that have been kind of tackling issues that are happening in the gay community. Right, right, right. Um, And uh, you, you... and I know because I've heard that you have been talking about doing a certain type of video for a long time, but right. trying to figure out what it was about or yeah. how you were going to do it. Right. Well, you did one about the HIV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. You did. <laughs> how dare you? Yeah. How? Uh, what right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that, that's I had to have I had to have my partner in mm-hmm. HIV. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> you're like, oh, you can't do anything without me. Uh, like, I literally will be on no other one of these. It's just be the, the <laughs> HIV um, oriented one that well, I want. Well, because you know I've shared with my listeners that um, ab- over a year ago I, w- I was diagnosed with HIV, so I'm kind of a newbie to the scene. Mm-hmm. And I am uh, less new. Yeah, because I've been positive for, um, uh, I don't even know. I mean, I do know, but like a long time. And um, you, and, and, and one thing that you just addressed in this video was that we don't talk about it as a community right. much. And it's mm-hmm. left a lo- oftentimes on the people who are positive to talk about it. Right. right. And um, while there are a lot of us, why should, it's hard to talk about. It is. I mean, I felt uncomfortable talking about it. Even on set, I had to say, I mean, we did a bunch of takes of different parts. I had to say HIV a ton of times, and I felt... Like, in the beginning, so uncomfortable saying it. What was the discomfort? Um, Well, like you said, I have been thinking about writing this for like a year, and I've been asking people like different opinions on it. Um, I just wanted to make something that was a conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what this video did. Like, you, you, I I feel like, I feel like if we're going to start to battle um, the stigma about HIV out amongst the straight community, Mm -hmm. we have to first address it in the gay community. I mean, I just feel like people aren't even talking about it at all, and they're just getting their information from the internet. I mean, honestly, I did a lot of research for this, and it was all online. There's all sorts of good information online. But there's bad um, information too. Well, that's the, and that's the thing. And I think um, um, talking about it to people who are experiencing mm-hmm. it is actually a really great way to get um, information out because one, we have to be relatively well versed in like the medical part about it to mm-hmm. like it, to be on top of it, and also the like uh, the transmission part of it, mm-hmm. um, which the like. Uh, you know, they just released a, they finalized a study that said if you're on meds and you're undetectable, you cannot transmit your HIV to someone else, which is huge news that everyone should be talking about. It's super huge news, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, And and the thing is that, um, but the the problem is, is that it's still growing. Like there are still people that are diagnosed. Because people aren't talking about it. Because people aren't talking about it. And I think that what was smart about your video, and we're gonna somehow share it. I don't really Mm -hmm. know how to do all of that, but we're gonna (laughs) figure it out. Today's the day uh-huh. um, that, like, it, 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 it literally just stated the questions. Like, the right. questions, like, like, do you ever talk about it? Mm-hmm. Do you get tested? When was the last time you got tested? Can I ask, mm-hmm. as a person who, is, who made this video, who is, was not talking about it, and who is uncomfortable talking about it, are, are you talking about it more? I mean, is yeah. it com- more comfortable? I are mean, people talking to you about it? People are talking to me about it. Um, I had somebody message me yesterday saying that they just got... 
um, diagnosed as being positive and they don't know anything about Interesting. it. And then I was the first person that they told. You so. know, I, 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 when I got di- I, I always fancied myself an activist uh, prior to my diagnosis. Okay. Yeah. You know, um, but once I was diagnosed with it, I actually just realized how little I actually knew mm-hmm. and how little I, um, and how readily available everything was because you know it not until it happens to you do people give a shit with all the education out there and everything that i knew or i thought i knew mm-hmm. it shouldn't have happened to me well <laughs> it, it, but it shouldn't have happened. well that's that's something i mean i think that 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 uh, <laughs> that brings to the point where a lot of people think it's not going to happen to them right. and i think um we a lot of people do not get tested because they're scared um, about what they might find, or they think they don't need to, and so as a result of that, it's still it's you know that's to be the, the thing to me that this brings up is that um, this is a, a still a big part of our community, right. and we don't talk about it anymore because people are not dying, right. um, and that is great, but but people are still, still contracting it. it, and and the thing is is like it's like yeah the meds are good, and I'm very grateful, you know, mm-hmm. and see, and that's the one thing that I think that I I, I would have liked. To have heard in your mm. video is the the conversation about undetectable and uh, like those words and mm. actually like you know and meds you know what I mean like right. talking about um, the fact that I, if I take my medication I'm I'm good I'm not gonna die right. but what you start you but you started something right. and you started in house which is where it needs to start before I w- before I was diagnosed there've been moments where I was got a little too promiscuous. <laughs> And I had a scare. Have you had a scare in in your day? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, but also it's like, should I have been scared? Or was I just scared because I just didn't know all the information of, Mm. like, how you can contract it or not? Because... Of course, after what I think is a scare, I do a bunch of Googling and mm-hmm. read a bunch of blogs. And they're like, well, you could get HIV basically from anything and anyhow. Anything is possible. But that's wrong information. But right. that's information that goes into your brain. Yeah. Yeah. You you hear like the, the buzzwords and yeah. whatnot. They're like, if you have an open wound and they have an open wound in their mouth, you could get it from kissing. It's like that stuff kind of sticks in your brain sometimes. And that's like. Totally. I think the best way to just like protect yourself is knowledge. Um, right. I, I, I I am pretty interested on the how like um, just going back to um, the discomfort level of talking about this. Like, I don't think we've really talked. What what for you made it makes it so uncomfortable? What makes it so uncomfortable, I guess, is that. A, I never really want to offend anybody. Mm -hmm. So I never want to say the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. That's just my own thing. Um, And I just felt uncomfortable because I honestly don't have a lot of close friends that have HIV. I have... I have peers and acquaintances that do, but nobody that I could really, like, pick their brain about. Yeah. Yeah. And that is interesting to me. I And, you know, uh, one thing that you said in the video, you say uh, you're asked if... um, uh, uh, you're I'm trying to make it funny. Oh yeah, yeah. Funny. yeah. And um, like, like what we're trying to do to a certain extent is to try and make HIV funny. And I think that people who are HIV positive have the, are allowed yeah. to. And the thing is, is it is like there are so many things that happened to me mm-hmm. in my life as a result of being HIV positive that are humorous, that are funny. You right. know, it's just that the problem that they all revolve around this like once very intensely mm-hmm. scary disease is difficult for people. Right. Yeah. Um, but does it feel like, here's a question, does it feel like HIV positive gay people are um, sick, are bad, are bad members of our society, are like, you know, is that right. a th- something that, that is in the head of gay people who are not positive? I think so. I feel like there's a bit of like a, aww. Sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, you got it. Yeah. Oh, you let your guard. You were uh, too. You yeah. had too like, much fun. Yeah, yeah. You opened up uh, Pandora's box now because I'm happy. you know uh, Casey's done that on a stand-up stage and has also been uh, in situations where he would rather hear people talk about him than talk about HIV. Well, yeah. sure. <laughs> well, I think, but I think that you're, you know, like, <laughs> well, I have it. <laughs> so it is. It's it. You know, like I, I, I do think that. Um, um, I will say I feel because I've attached myself to it in a way in the industry, I am um, 
associated with it and as a result open to stigma right. with it and that's just something that's going to have to continue to be a part of my career because mm-hmm. I made this choice to be open about it it's the same thing as like being gay I mean, right if you are a gay comedian you right. have to that's what you associate yourself with that's your comedy right um but yeah and it's like like you said you can do stand up and make jokes and say whatever you want about it yeah um are you ready now to kind of be some uh, one that people will come to and ask you questions because like yeah. like because I mean, this is a challenge for you that now you have to educate yourself more i, I feel I do, you know but also i want it to the way i wanted to perceive myself in the video was that I am like a lot of you. I'm like a lot of people. I don't know everything. Yeah. I don't have all the answers, but they're there and people have them and they're not hard to get. Um, but it starts with just like admitting that you don't know what you should know and go from there. And yeah, and you know, and nothing makes us feel, uh, well, I'll speak for myself, nothing makes me feel like more shitty about it than when people are tiptoeing around the issue um and so i want i think it's good to know that you can talk to people who are hiv positive about being hiv positive because most of the times they're gay and want to talk about themselves Uh, (laughs) so go for it one and two i think nothing makes a person feel more normal with their situation than if people are laughing about it with them not at them i think that one that's what you did and two don't be shy about making jokes about um, HIV as long as they're from an educated right. place. And you know? also, I think it's important also to uh, just let all the uh, uh, the prep enthusiasts out there, like, that that, that changes everything for you. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, yeah, maybe you're not going to contract HIV, but there are still other things yeah. that you can readily get by having raw sex. You know, I always uh, tell people it's funny because if I have someone over from Grindr, um, I'm very open about my status on the app because I don't want to have any awkward encounters with people um, in my home. But <laughs> they are more apt outside. They, they, <laughs> they are. They, well, that's that's true yeah. because they are because I'm open about it on the app that I make sure you're positive and they're like, oh yeah, I want to fuck it and I want to fuck your raw because yeah. you know gay people are classy. <laughs> but when they come here and they see wigs, they leave uh-huh. because yeah. wigs now. Are scarier than HIV. Well, it, oh, I had this joke uh, <laughs> on one of the jokes on stage is that I, I've had more people turn me down because of my uncircumcised penis than because of uh, Valid. being <laughs> HIV positive. And it's like a preference thing, but I'm like, um, my cum is poison. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to have sex with me because I got a weird dick. But uh, that's your next uh, video that's right that's there, baby. Yeah. Uncircumcised. But, <laughs> but you know, and like, but the thing is, like, my cum, like cum is not poison because it's the poison is suppressed by the meds that are, <laughs> are helpful. But it is interesting with prep, like. And if, if someone's on prep and they find out you're positive, they instantly think that they you just they they can do whatever they fucking want to you. And that is another stigma I think is like if you're HIV positive that you're just like a dirty cum whore. Like you like you <laughs> judge us in public, but then on the apps you're like, Oh, I can't wait to use them as a dump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. So yeah. Michael yeah, comment on that, yeah, Michael. Yeah, yeah. So Michael, I, I guess like I wanted to have yeah. you on to thank you for initiating a conversation that I hope continues. Yeah. Um, and I just think that you are t- truly someone to look out for because you're smart. You you hold the gay community accountable. And I think that that's important because there's a lot of shitty us mm-hmm. out there. And this is being recorded on National Coming Out Day. And so uh, don't so. be shitty. <laughs> When yeah. you come out as a gay, yeah, it be gets a, better be as a, long as you're yeah, not Yeah, it shitty. gets better unless you're an asshole. <laughs> and uh, so, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> did I lose the audience just now? I don't know. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe me, but <laughs> can we talk about uh, what are some ideas for your next videos? Can you give yeah. us a little teaser on what you're thinking about? For sure. One of my next ones is going to be about um, gay people's love of alcohol and how they abuse don't come it. for me on that. <laughs> <laughs> and also, another one is if gay men like being called beautiful. Yes, I saw that on yeah, your uh, on your Facebook side. And yes, I do. I, do I like to be called beautiful. You're in the minority. It, I like I like to be well when it happens so rarely and I'm so convinced it's true. I love it when I hear the words. You yeah. like it as a man or as a as a, uh, a well, drag yeah. Whatever. What do you got? Yeah, I don't care. I listen. I, I can make a compliment's a compliment. 
All right, I'm never fishing for him, but well, I'll always catch him. But that's and I, I, I'm that's a really good interesting. <laughs> Tell I'm me more about my. Um, but it's, it's our masculine, it's our desires to be masked men. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. People are put off by it. Yeah. They're not turned on by being called beautiful. That's all. interesting. Well, you can call me beautiful all you want, <laughs> and I think that you're beautiful you're too. Beautiful. Michael. You're beautiful. You're um, beautiful. So Don't tell, so tell, so <laughs> tell people where they can find you on social media. Um, Instagram and Twitter is Michael Henry nine one five, and uh, YouTube just search Michael Henry. In the first person to come up. Um, and listen, guys, this is the uh, this is what you will be able to see if you tune in on the Patreon because I'm getting it started. God damn it, I'm gonna do it. I want to. You'll that's, be rich. That no psychic time. isn't right. <laughs> I want to be successful, and I uh, so I'm tagging onto this guy. Yes. Um, <laughs> always uh, listen to the Tony Soto Show every Wednesday on iTunes. Uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at the Tony Soto Show. And you can always listen to me in this asshole every Thursday on the Gay Power Half Hour. You want to tell people where they can see you? Uh, KCWLEY on Twitter. And um, you can see me every Tuesday at the Urban Social House for my show, Find a Comedy Show, in Thai Town. Okay. 8 well, p.m. Thank you, guys. And thank you, Michael. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys.